All right. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Sean. I'm going to be talking about TikTok today and just some TikTok advice for you guys because uh, I, I mean, I'm not a self-proclaimed TikTok expert, but people always say that I'm really good at it. Um, so I will share everything I know and hopefully uh, I can say something insightful here. And just so you guys know, I have like 650K followers on mine. I've been growing that for the past year and a half, two years. Um, I kind of look at TikTok making like basically there's like two buckets for me. There's like fabricated stories and then there's like real stories, right? So sometimes I'll, because I do a lot of comedy stuff, I'll make a story up and then I will execute on that story. And yeah, so to, to show you what I mean, I'm going to show you one of the t uh, TikToks I made that went the most viral the uh, dog tinder tiktok my dog's been lonely so i made her a dating profile at first we could only find humans we almost gave up but then we found sean she was happy so i swiped right and he super liked us conversation went great so we decided to meet up. She was nervous and excited. But when we got there, Sean looked different. He catfished us. She decided her human is all she needs. Okay, so that one went pretty viral. And that came about because I was just, I had to make a TikTok. And I was sitting in my room like, ah, oh, TikToks, TikToks, TikToks. And it... I was like, dog, Tinder. And I was like, oh, I can put my dog on Tinder. And then from there, it was just, you build the story out, right? People, because what I find with TikTok is, you know, anybody can go viral if they film a cat barking, but then that means you need a cat that barks, right? So what we have to do as creators is tell a story. Um, so in the case of that, I was like, okay, well, what happens if you're on a social media app? or I'm sorry, a dating app, what's the worst case scenario, you get catfished. So I had my ending, everything else, it was just like Lego blocks, piecing it together to get to the ending. And um, that works, you know, and I, and I also sometimes look at it like lying on TikTok, because a ton of people thought that was real. And you know, part of storytelling, not to get too uh, heady here, but I remember in film school, there was like a quote from a filmmaker that was like, filmmaking is lying. And I never got that until, weirdly enough, making TikToks. It was like, when I lie to people on TikTok, it goes viral. So that's a good way to look at storytelling. Now, that was made up. Now, I'm going to show you one that was real, but I still had to tell a story. So I'm going to show the uh, Beeple video. This is how I stole million dollar art. Beeple is a digital artist whose prolific work has been seen everywhere. And as of recently, one of the most expensive artists currently alive. The final bid, $69 million. Oh my gosh. He came to the city yesterday to screen the documentary 1.37 p.m. made for him. So I approached him with a plan. Hey Beeple, can I show you a magic trick? <laughs> okay, so can you just draw a stick figure real quick? Okay, not much of an artist. Okay. Thanks, man. <laughs> and now I have a real Beeple drawing hanging in my home. So I show that one because it's a story still, but it's not made up. It actually happened. And I think something that was interesting with that for me was, you know, I had the idea like, oh, it'd be funny to trick people so I can get the drawing. But the hard part then is not the the idea even itself, but then the executing on the idea, right? So I had footage of me walking to the event. I had footage, you know, leading up to me, walking up to people, him drawing the whole thing and then walking away. And then I had footage of me running with the paper. And so basically my, my point about this is that a lot of times with TikTok making, it's almost like essay writing. Like, you know, you want to tell a story, you want it to be cohesive, you know, but also like, a lot of the making process is what can I take out because TikTok's all about watch time. And so one of the big things I do when editing a TikTok is like, what can be removed? And uh, you really have to kill your darlings, as they say, remove as much as possible and, and get really only the essential stuff. And that really helps um, the, the video's potential to do well because it's shorter and it's more engaging and you don't have any su super, superflu superfluous 
there's a good word, a, a superfluous things. So um, I also, okay, um, let's see. Now I've been doing like vlog stuff too, right? So it's like, oh, I'll go make, we'll go pick up a piano and we'll put nails in it. And that does well. That's like, a, that, those are easier things to do because it's like, I don't have to make up some extravagant thing. But then there's even a lower tier of TikToks, right? Which is even easier to make, which is where you just have the green screen effect and you talk about something, right? So I'm going to show you guys real quick the Mike Boyd TikTok I made that got uh, 3 million or something views. Check this out, guys. Who the hell is this guy? You can always see him briefly in Gary Vee videos, usually next to huge music artists. I just discovered his old YouTube recently. He's got interviews with the biggest artists in the world before they were famous. Yo, what's poppin'? It's Kendrick Lamar. And these videos have no views. This Mac Miller concert has 24 likes. He even has an interview with Wiz Khalifa where Wiz is excited about having 27,000 followers. I got 27,000 followers, so tell a friend to tell a friend. He works for Gary Vee and he's got this weird talent where he can spot famous artists before they get big. I'm paying Boyd a lot of money to discover new fucking music for you fuckers. Some of his recent discoveries are artists like Tierra Wack and Fresco Trey. The guy is like the Warren Buffett of the music industry and Gary Vee's secret weapon. All right, so that one did well, and the reason I show you that one is because, for the most part, it was a pretty easy lift, right? It's just the green screen effect. I did make it a little more, uh, I added some production value in the editing premiere and stuff, but the, the baseline is, I'm just telling you guys about this guy at work. And so, um, you know, first of all, hooks are very important, right? That's why in the beginning, I'm like, uh, I'm like, Check this out, guys. Who the hell is this guy? And then if you're watching, you're like, all right, let me see. Because, you you know, that the, the TikTok's all about getting people right away. But then the other reason I knew that video would do well is because I found myself in real life. And this is a big thing I could uh, I tell people about TikTok is I was going up to people or if we were talking about music, I'm like, you got to meet this guy, Mike Boyd. Like, he's the sage. He's met all these amazing artists and, and nobody seems to know about him. And what I realized was. Well, if I'm telling people, if I'm passionate about it in real life, then I'm going to it's going to do well on TikTok, you know. And so basically my point is, if there's something that you are interested in, you should talk about it on TikTok with the green screen because it might register, it might connect with other people like it does with you. Um, I feel like a lot of times I'll see TikToks where and, and everybody does this at first is like they're, you know, they're like, whoa, guys, check this out. This is happening. And it's like, okay, like it feels like a character where, I, and, and people can sniff that out right away. I think when you're more genuine and, and really talking about what you're passionate about, people are, are more likely to connect with that. So um, like, cause sometimes people almost like treat TikTok like they're a news anchor too, which, you know, it can work, but um, news anchors belong on the news sometimes or most of the time. And so TikTok's a different platform. So, um, and then let's see. I don't know if I want to show the Amish one. Um, okay, I'm going to show the prisoner one next. So I found this website called writeaprisoner.com where you could just browse through profiles of prisoners and you could just pick who you want to be pen pals with and write them a letter. So I found this guy, Don. I liked his vibe. I liked his profile. I liked his hand tattoos. So I wrote him a letter. I introduced myself, told him a little bit about me, let him know some of my interests. And then I asked him some questions like how many freckles he has or what kind of dog he'd be if he could be a dog. I even put a knife inside the envelope so he can defend himself in prison. Just kidding. I didn't do that. But I did write him a poem. So I sealed it up, put it in the mailbox and the mail lady took it. I'm not sure if Don will respond. He might think I'm a little weird, but if he does answer, I'll let you know. So that one was real. Um, I actually did write Doug. I still write Doug. Um, and, but that's a good example of like, it's almost like you could treat TikTok like maybe even like documenting, like documentaries and stuff. Like, it's like, I just was like, oh, what if I wrote a prisoner and documented it? And it went super viral. And my point is like, if you, I, I've told people like, some at the doctor's office recently um the nurse was like oh i want to be big on tiktok and i was like well basically when you have a perspective that's interesting show it to people because most people aren't nurses you know like there's people that go viral that work at subway because they're just filming their day working at subway most people don't work at subway so that's why it goes viral because we're getting insight into this interesting perspective and so that's why i wanted to show the prisoner one is if you just do something interesting talk about the bare essentials of that story that you're showing it's going to do well on TikTok a lot of the time. So, uh, you know, g give that a try. I see some people saying, did he respond? Yes, he responded. He actually 
recently has been calling me for the first time um, since knowing him. So uh, pretty cool stuff. Um, and there's going to be some updates with that coming soon. Um, I, and then I'm going to show one more thing. But this one, this next one, this is a key thing here. If you guys have any TikToks that do well or bomb, but are TikToks, make sure to put them on YouTube um, as YouTube shorts. You just upload it like a regular video because I've had so many videos blow up on YouTube that bombed on TikTok. And I've had videos that did well on TikTok and also blew up on, on YouTube. So definitely try that. But this next one is one of my favorites. I wrote it with my friends back in Jersey. Um, it's this Amish, breaking Amish video. Yo, are you Amish? Yeah. You want to break Amish? Oh, yeah. What's your name? Uh, Andrew. From the House of Bogan. Oh, the House of Bogan. The House of Bogan. It's so often. Should we uh, say a few words? I don't have anything to say. Yeah. Okay. What say you, House of Bergen? It is what it is. Guy died like a bitch. Spoken like a true G. Okay, so that one bombed on TikTok, but got um, almost 8 million views on YouTube as of uh, like the past month. So, and I see some people asking, is that person Amish? No. And remember what I said, right? I said that one filmmaker said that filmmaking is about lying. And what did I do there? I lied to TikTok. I said, we picked up an Amish guy. But really, it was just my friend Andrew, put him in a vest, and nobody knew the difference. Well, actually, a lot of people knew the difference. They were like, this is clearly a sketch, and I love it. But then other people were like, ah, he's not Amish. You guys are lying. Like, it was weird. It was a, a mix of, like, people mad as if I really thought they would believe it. There was people that believed it. But regardless, um, my point there is just, you know, lie lie on tiktok and you'll do well no nah, and tell stories you know that there's a story there there's a through it's like we pick up this guy it ends with us you know making you think he he died right um and there's a story in between and and mostly everything is is important in there I, even watching it now i think there's stuff that could be taken out but um for the most part when building these things it's really about getting rid of of the fat and that's a lot of times when people do send me tiktoks that they made or or want help editing it it's like 90 percent of the time it's me just removing things and that that really makes it um a lot a lot better you're you're, you're trimming the fat and because all of life there are viral moments like you're at, fa at dinner with your family you know your mom says something funny the salt fall there's like a viral moment in that that two hour dinner you just have to know the TikTok algorithm and the and how it works and you could edit that two hour dinner into a 10 second clip so I'm pretty much done ranting at you guys. I uh, hope this was helpful.